Mm, guys, let's wait for a couple of minutes uh, till other people join, and then we'll take it from there. Okay. Uh, Kamran, Murli and uh, Shashank, uh, did you get a chance to import those uh, jar files into Linux operating system? Yeah, I didn't get a chance. Uh, I will be checking on like tomorrow. Okay, no problem. How about Murli? I got a chance, Ravi. This is Shashank. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tell me. Yeah, but uh, I did on my I did on my laptop. That is my local system uh, machine. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I, I I could import them successfully and uh, you know uh, start writing classes for Mapper and Red User. Okay, so so my question is, uh, you are able to eliminate all those uh, compilation errors and everything, right? Are you able to eliminate I'm not, all those? I'm not. I'm not coming to. A, I'm I'm not come up to that point, but uh, I'm sure uh, it it will get executed. Okay, okay. One thing uh, that you guys need to understand is uh, even even if you don't have any uh, HDFS uh, context, as well as uh, even if you don't have any even if you don't have any uh, Hadoop based Linux environment also as well, uh, using a plain vanilla uh, Eclipse environment, uh, you should be in a position to write these uh, MapReduce programs, okay, as well as uh, you can have the option of uh, executing these MapReduce programs, writing and executing these MapReduce programs, uh, uh, you know, at the same time, uh, you can debug them and then you can see the output also as well. That's how these uh, Map and Reduce programs have been developed. Okay. And even though when you uh, when you are able to develop these MapReduce programs, uh, what happens is uh, they they happens to be initiated from the client side, and uh, they need to be copied and distributed to the HDFS. They need to be copied and distributed to the HDFS. Okay, uh, and that is the place where uh, they are ex they are expected to be executed at your respective data nodes. Okay, uh, with the help of uh, these mappers and reduce with the help of the task tracker. So that's why I expect you to make sure that you know, uh, no matter doesn't matter whether you uh, work in the Linux sandbox or whether you work on your uh, Windows environment, please make sure that these things are uh, imported and then they're being executed properly. Okay, so let's wait for a couple of minutes. Uh, Divya has joined and then uh, it's okay, we, we can go ahead. No. I'm just waiting for. Uh, uh, Sarvanan, uh, let, let's give one minute and then we'll take it from there, okay? So today we are going to discuss this uh, driver code class. And uh, I'll tell you the algorithm, how exactly the driver class, ha class has to be written and uh, how you need to execute those uh, things. And accordingly, we'll see those uh, job programs also as well at the same time. 
before we proceed uh, any, do you have any questions for what are all the concept that has been covered so far session divya or murli or kamran so ravi uh, you know uh, i missed attending the hdfs uh, the actual uh, classes where you told about uh, hdfs architecture and stuff mm -hmm. and you know you sent me the recordings but i didn't get a chance to look at them so uh, will you be uh, by any chance repeating them or uh, should i follow those videos no 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 one thing what i want you to do is that uh, i want you to go through those particular videos once okay at some point of time whenever okay. you get a chance the mm -hmm. moment once you are done i can have a one on one session with you to make sure that i can go through you take you through those particular concepts uh, in order to have a fair amount of understanding that way i can help you out uh, um, sure ravi Otherwise, yeah. the other thing is that uh, whenever you and myself is having the free time, we can also go through that one also as well. You tell me sure. like, uh, what what your preference, and accordingly I can take that one. Sure, sure, Ravi. Right. First, let me. Uh, I I'll just uh, look at those videos, and if I have any questions, I'll let you know. Sure. Yeah, that really helps. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do you have any book for map reducer programming any pdf anything if you can send me that would be great i can see the other example as well okay um, see even in your lms also as well uh, what are the edreka system that you have used let me show you that. yeah uh, you have those particular examples uh, in lms or else uh, other things what you can have is that uh, uh, there is a there is a book called as a hadoop definitive guide you can see here uh, orally hadoop definitive guide that you are seeing here can you see my screen okay let me open it okay there is a guide called as a, uh, orally hadoop definitive guide this one you can use okay where uh, they explain each and every step of your map reduce process in particular otherwise uh, there are a lot number of blogs that are available as well as uh, there are a lot number of videos that you can not videos basically um, blogs websites uh, see whatever uh, process you see uh, the basic uh, uh, flowchart process of this map reduce is going to be the same okay but uh, the place where it going to be different is uh, the different types of file systems you use the different types of file systems okay uh, along with uh, i told you right there are different types of file formats we can use one is sequence file as well as key value text input format as well as text input format file these are the places where it is going to be different okay and eventually i'll be providing the different types of examples for the purpose of working uh, camera don't worry on that one please thank you no problem so here what we are going to do is that uh, we are here to create this uh, driver code class right driver code class driver code is a client or see the reason why i am calling this one as a driver code it's a driver the reason why i am calling this uh, class as a uh, driver is uh, uh, mapper doesn't have any independent existence whereas the reducer also doesn't have any independent existence okay but in order to connect uh, that mapper and reducer in order to execute your end to end of your uh, map reducer process uh, you are going to write a class and that class is what is called as a driver class that's what what i mean basically okay okay so one thing what we do is that uh, you know like uh, whenever you are having a mapper and reducer you doesn't have this uh, public static void main uh, main method you don't have right but this is the place where you need to uh, write those particular main methods also as well okay so here the first thing what i'm going to do is see here i'm going to specify
public class. Okay, I want to define this one as word count. Yeah, last time and from from the last couple of days, uh, we we started defining uh, what is a mapper and what is a reducer. But this time we have defined word map and word reducer. But this is the place where we are going to define this word count. Okay. Now, uh, when can we say a class is a mapper class or a class is a reducer class? If this is going to implement, uh, if this is going to implement a map reduce base. If it is going to extend map reduce base as well as if it is going to implement that mapper and reducer interfaces, then only we have told. Okay, one thing you can uh, take into account is uh, e even your uh, mapper class or the reducer class does not extend your uh, um, map reduce base, that should not be a problem. But definitely they need to implement those two interfaces. One is the mapper interface along with your uh, mapper interface. And what is the second one? The second one is your. Uh, uh, reducer interface that they need to implement. Similarly, here also a class, whenever it is being called as a driver code class, what should happen is that uh, it should extend uh, two types of interfaces. Sorry, uh, it should extend a particular class. Configured. Okay, as well as it should implement an interface that implementation that the interface is called as a tool interface. Implements tool interface. Okay, this is the first thing that we need to do. So, any driver cloud class, what you are going to write, which is going to have this uh, main method, should automatically extend. Uh, should automatically extend two things. What are the two things here? It should. Uh, uh, it should implement your. Uh, it should implement your uh, tool interface as well as you should extend this configured class basically. Okay, now let me tell you one thing. Uh, Divya, can you tell me? Uh, can you tell me uh, what would be the parameters that we need to supply? Okay, when you are going to execute this uh, MapReduce program, one thing what you need to do is that you need to specify something called as how do. How do. Okay, what is the command that we need to do? I need to do something called as jar. Uh, I need to specify the jar file. What is that jar file here? Something called as uh, wc.jar. There is nothing but your wordcon.jar is something that we need to specify. Wordcon.jar that we need to specify. And uh, along with this wordcon.jar, what we need to do is that uh, what would be the what are the other things that I need to specify? I need to specify this word count. Can you tell me the reason why this word, word count is being specified? Why the word count is being specified? Because this is the class which is going to contain the main method. That is the reason we need to specify this uh, word count class that we need to specify. Okay, and along with this one, we need to specify something called as uh, uh, file.txt. This is nothing but the input file, and then we need to specify the directory where you are going to write this output code. We are going to specify the directory where we are going to write this output code. So this is what is your. Uh, uh, this is what is your. Uh, uh, HDFS command that we need to use for the purpose of uh, executing your uh, um, map reduce programs. Are you guys clear with what I'm saying here, Murli? Yeah, right. Yeah, this is one thing that we need to. Uh, this is one thing that we need to really do. I have a question. Like in Hadoop, we don't need to specify any parameter or dash jar. Like in the Java, if you execute anything with jar, then you specify a dash jar and then give the main class name. Here we need to specify Hadoop FS jar, right? Sorry, we need to specify Hadoop FS jar. That is the same thing that we okay. specify here. Okay. Okay. Now you have this one that is specified here. So just like you have the mapper class and the reducer method that you have implemented, okay. Here, what is going to happen is, uh, uh, here, what is going to happen is, uh, uh, this word count also, this word count also, uh, need to override a particular method, and that particular method is called as the run method, okay. So let me try to implement this one in the system, and then I'll show you so that you can uh, easily refer to this one. Unlock. We have this eclipse.
Okay, we specify this one as a uh, uh, JW count. Right. We have this one here, which has this default package. We have defined this word mapper as well as we have this word reducer. And here uh, I want to define one more class. What is that class here? Mm. New. Okay, which is going to be a class. This class is going to be our uh, word count class. Okay, and here if you want to, to use, you need to use this uh, public static word main. Even if you don't specify, also that should be fine. But uh, you click and finish like this. There should not be a problem at all. Public word count is there. So you close these windows. You close these windows along with uh, this outline is not required. So what I want to do here, I want to extends. What is the name of the class that I want to uh, extend? Uh, this is nothing but your uh, configured. Okay, and I want to implement I want to implement a tool, right? This is the tool that I want to define. Implements a tool interface. This is the thing that I want to define. So what should I do now here? I need to define something called as a control uh, shift to go like this. It is going to do uh, org dot uh, hadoop dot utility dot tool interface that I want to. Use. So you click on this one and then it is going to define these two things. Here. It is going to extend this configured as well as it is going to implement this tool and this two has been defined. Okay, wide method is wide main method is something that we are not going to define right now. Why? Because uh, word count need to implement a particular method. Okay, that method is nothing but uh, the method which is going to be there within your tool interface, which is going to be there within your tool interface. So what I need to do is that the moment once you put your cursor on this word count class, what you need to do is that you need to go ahead and then start uh, adding this particular unimplemented methods. So what is the first implement? What is the uh, first uh, um, implemented method that we need to use? The first method that we need to use is nothing but your public int uh, run method that we need to use here. Okay, so here, what I'm going to do is that uh, instead of using this particular uh, ARG of zero, ARG of zero, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to specify this one as ARGS of. ARGS of I'm going to use. ARGS of I'm going to use like this. Close exception. This run method always be an integer written type? Is... Run method always should be integer only. Yes, at any point of time. Yes. Okay. Now, if you want to overwrite, that is a runtime polymorphism from run. Okay. But going by the way, what has been defined as for the Java standards, this, is, this has to be an integer only. Okay. Maybe then the uh, tool in an interface, there is a more runtime method, is a different types of. Uh, the tool interface, you are going yeah. to have a method which is existing, which is nothing but run. And there also it has been defined as integer only. That is the reason the same signature is coming over here. Okay. 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 Now, one thing that we want to do is that uh, I want to understand what are these ARGs. Divya, can you define what is what is this uh, ARGs here? What is this ARGs? So I have told you uh, here. Uh, Hadoop jar wc dot jar word count file dot text as well as wc output. Okay. I among them, I is input. among them, can you please tell me what are these uh, two arguments that we need to define them as uh, uh, command line arguments here? Suppose let me tell you one thing. I have mm. a I have a program. Okay. Within that program, what I'm having is uh, the method is there. What is that method is uh, uh, public? Sorry, I'm having a method which is nothing but your uh, uh, public static uh, wide main main of string 
ARGS of like that it is there. Okay, now I am trying to execute a program. That execution of a program is going to be like this. Java. The name of the program is add for namesake, and then I am passing this particular parameters one, two, three. Okay, now tell me uh, what are the parameter? What are the arguments that you are having here that will be passed to that main method? What are the arguments that will be passed to that main method? One, two, four. One, two, four. Yes. One, two, four are nothing but the arguments that will be passed onto that main method. Uh, that is really good. Okay. Now, uh, one, two, four are nothing but the arguments that are being passed to that uh, main method. Okay. So, uh, what we can say here? Uh, here, uh, ARG of zero is going to be ARG of zero uh, is going to be one. Similarly, uh, forget. Um, forgive me for those caps. ARG of one uh, is going to be two, as well as uh, ARG of uh, uh, two is going to be four. Right? This is how this is the parameters are expected to be passed. Okay. Now within this one, now within this one, uh, what are the command line arguments that you are having here? What are the minimum two arguments that we need to pass as uh, parameter pass as uh, arguments to this uh, uh, jar program? File text and word out. Yeah, file text and then word count. Okay, so that means that what should happen here? This uh, file dot uh, file dot txt as well as uh, uh, word count output. These are the two directories that we need to pass them as uh, uh, inputs basically, right? These are the two things that we need to pass them as inputs here. So here, uh, one thing what I'm going to do is that uh, I'm going to define an exception here. Okay, uh, what I'm going to do is that initially. I would like to check the number of arguments that have been passed. I would like to check the number of arguments that has been passed. So what I do is uh, if okay uh, if uh, ARGS dot what is that one here length if ARGS of length uh, uh, how should I define here? It should always be uh, equal to two. In case if it is going to be less than two, if this is going to be less than two, what is something that I need to do here? Can you, can you tell me? What is something that I need to define here? I need to define this one as uh, uh, system dot out dot println. Dot out dot. Uh, Println, okay, and what I do is that uh, I try to define these two things like this. That mm -hmm. is, uh, please give the proper proper okay uh, file and uh, uh, directory parameters, directory arguments. Yes, like that I'll specify and once I specify uh, what I do is that I'll try to define this one as return minus one. Anybody can tell me what is the purpose of this return minus one? What is the purpose of this return minus one? Hmm. That means that uh, if there is some error that is going to happen, then you're going to return minus one. Okay, but if your program, if your program is going to contain the proper number of arguments, automatically what would happen is that uh, this will uh, this will return zero, which is nothing but a success. But whenever there is an exception that you are going to have, then that is a place. Uh, uh, then that is a place where you want to return this minus one here. So the first thing that you need to check within this particular run method is whatever the number of arguments that are being passed as command line arguments while you are executing your uh, MapReduce program, you need to check the number of parameters. The number of parameters should always be. Uh, greater than or equal to two. If this is going to be less than two, throw an exception and then saying that uh, this is what is required basically. So is this one clear to you guys or not? Yes or no? Shashank, is it clear? Yes, Ravi. How about Divya? Yes, Ravi, it's clear. Yeah, Sarvaran and Murli and uh, 
Okay. Yes, clear. Okay. Now let me tell you. The entire uh, job what you are expected to run, the entire program what you are expected to run, is going to be uh, is going to be dependent on this particular configured. Is going to be dependent on this particular configured. Okay. Now let me ask you a couple of questions, and based on the questions what I am going to ask, uh, let me try to derive the answers. Okay, so first thing, when you try to execute the job, what is the first job that is expected to be executed? Can anybody tell me? Uh, the first job that is supposed to be executed is nothing but your word count job, right? First job that has to be executed is nothing but the word count job. Okay. Now the second thing is uh, this word count job is expected to utilize the code, is expected to utilize the code. Yeah, that are existing in uh, two other classes. What are, what are the other two other classes here? First class is first class is nothing but your mapper class, okay. And the second class is nothing but your reducer class. Reducer class, okay. What this uh, what this mapper class is going to do here? This mapper class is going to take the input from your uh, uh, record reader. This mapper class is going to take the input from your record reader, okay. And uh, it is going to take the input like this, right? It is going to take the input like this. And uh, the mapper, what it will do is that uh, it will execute that mapper and then pass that uh, output to another phase. What is that phase in between here? That phase is nothing but your uh, shuffle and sort. Shuffle and sort that is going to pass here and uh, from shuffle and sort, uh, your inputs are expected to be passed to the reducer. From shuffle and sort, okay, your uh, outputs are expected to be passed as input to this reducer here. Okay, word count is sitting here, record rate is sitting here, and the shuffle and sort is, is sitting here. So what we are doing here, we have your file which is being uh, read by your, uh, which is being read by your record reader. This is your file here. This is your file that is going to be read by your record reader. Okay. Now this is the reducer, and the uh, reducer is uh, expected to pass the output to your uh, directly here. So this is your output file. Output file. Okay. This is how this is going to happen, right? This is how it is going to happen. Now tell me among these particular blocks, uh, on which one you have the control, and which things you really don't have the control. We need to specify the name of the file that is okay. We need to specify the name of the file that is okay. But how the file is going to be passed to this record reader, and this record reader is going to give the uh, key value pairs as input to this uh, mapper, is this something that we are going to define, or this is which is out of scope of our context, uh, Divijay? Record reader is out of scope or in scope of our context? Do you need to program anything for this record reader? Uh, we have to give the file input type for we have to give the file input type even if you are not giving the file input time uh, by default it is going to be taken as a text input Ex file format right yes okay so there is no way that you are going to program this uh, record reader how to take that particular file input and then uh, break those particular file inputs into the key value pairs that is something that you are not going to do it is going to be taken care of by those uh, internal java code itself is it clear? Yes. Okay. Uh, Sarvanan, I hope you are also following. Sarvanan. I think he is not there. You are not there? Oh my God. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Okay. What day is there? Okay. Okay. So, the record rate is not there. And do you have any control on this shuffle and sort? We really don't have any control on this shuffle and sort also as well, right? We really do also don't have any control on this uh, shuffle and sort. That means, when you don't have any control on this shuffle and sort, why because literally we are not going to program anything on this shuffle and sort, okay? And uh, that means that, we really don't have any control on the input that is being passed as uh, we don't have any control on the input that is being passed to the reducer 
point number one. Okay, we really don't have any control on the input that uh, the mapper is going to produce. That the mapper is going, that this record rate is going to produce. We don't have any control on the output also as well. And what we have the control? We have the control on the mapper code. We have the uh, control on this reducer code as well as we have the control on the output that is being produced by the reducer code. On the output that is being produced by the reducer code. Okay, now in such a case, uh, uh, when and my Java program is going to, the JVM is going to invoke this uh, word count for the purpose of executing all these particular things. But right now, at this point of time, everything are going to be mutually disjoint and exclusive. The record rate is exclusive, the mapper is exclusive, the shuffle and chart is exclusive, the reader and this output file are totally exclusive in context to this particular word count program. Okay, now for the purpose of uh, making this word count program to link all these particular things, to integrate all these chess pieces in order to execute a in order to execute the, your uh, full map reduce program what you need to do is that uh, you need to get hold of these configurations what are the configurations that means that what is the size of the file where it is located how much space it is required and how much time it takes to execute that particular program okay so each and every program or the class what you are having here will be having an associated configuration okay that particular configuration has to be taken and then uh, that configuration should be passed to this word count program and then saying that hey word count program I am a configuration class. I am responsible for the purpose of bringing all the required configurations What are required in order to execute your um, map reduce program. So I am going to be the linkage for the purpose of uh, uh, Linking all these disjoint pieces together in order to successfully execute your map reduce program. Okay for that particular purpose only what you're going to have is that uh, you're going to have this particular configured class that is going to be extended here this concept is very very important in case uh, uh, in case uh, if you don't understand this one then it is going to be a problem please let me know if you have still any questions i'll be glad to answer your questions but at the same time what i want to do is that uh, uh, I want to make sure that uh, you are understanding this particular concept. I don't mind uh, repeating once again on this particular concept. Please let me know. Murli, is it clear to you? Yeah, clear so far. Okay. Okay. So, so the next thing what I'm going to do here is uh, I am going to create a class I am going to create a class okay and that class is going to be of job config class job config class okay what i'm going to do is uh, i'm trying to define a uh, object which is of uh, configure is equal to new job configuration of what i'm going to do here i'm going to define this uh, word count but uh, Is the thing that I'm going to define like this. So here, what I'll be doing is that I'll specify something like uh, Control Shift uh, O. Okay, this is defined now. This has been defined. So how it has been defined here? Uh, you're going to have this uh, configured uh, 
uh, this jar file which is going to be imported in this one so that's why we have defined here so this so for this configuration object what i'm doing here one thing what i'm doing is that i'm bounding this uh, i'm binding this uh, word count uh, the driver code to this configuration first okay and as what i have told you here i need to bind uh, i need to bind the mapper class as well as i need to bind this particular reducer class also as well okay so what is the thing that i need to do here i am going to define these three things here that is uh, conf dot conf dot here you will be having a class and that class is nothing but your set mapper see here if you have if you have something like set mapper is there set mapper class i'll start using this particular method conf dot set mapper class of uh, what i'm doing is specifying here i specify this one as wc mapper wc mapper mapper okay i want to associate this particular class so i'll define this one as set class like this done okay it is showing like this conf.set set map of wc map dot class map class okay um, we'll also do one thing conf dot set a uh, reducer class of reducer class of uh, word uh, rdc dot plus this one also i'm going to define like this this is okay uh, okay but why this is coming only for this mapper here i don't know set mapper class is it not uh, extending mapper here this one oh my god somewhere it has been yesterday what was the program that we are developing here word mapper i think oh my god this is the place where it started you can move it yeah fine okay open the java okay no this is not uh, wc mapper this is not what your word map right mapper okay and uh, here this is the to be word reducer mapper only a mapper spilling here and uh, what is the second one here the second one is a uh, word reduce sorry what is it showing here set mapper class session mapper is not class 
we have used this one, right? We have specified uh, hey. Where did we write this one here yesterday? Any idea where did we implement these things yesterday? Oh my God, I didn't save that one. It's much right? Anyway, see, I am going to extend this uh, uh, mapper class as well as I'm going to extend this reducer class also as well. Okay, for this particular purpose, uh, let me do one thing here. Uh, here, I specify this one as uh, extends. Again, I need to do all the things here. Again, I need to input control shift or something is messed up here. Something is messed up here. So if I do like this, and then if I open, uh, is there something that is going to be okay here? Extends I, I I think when you copy the you copy the whole package, and that's why you overwrite the other two classes. No, no. In this WC mapper, in this yesterday. I have written this program. Where I have written this program? This is the reducer that I have written, but where is the mapper? Reducer is okay. Since the reducer is okay, here it is not sh uh, saying anything on this reducer you are seeing here, right, Murli? This is correct. But we don't have the mapper here. I really am understanding where this mapper has been implemented. Somewhere in uh, Java test, I think you did. Where is it from? This is the word count. In this one, I have implemented. Uh, you can you can check in the like go in the root. There is in source dot bk. Sometimes it create the bka bak file. If there, then you can pick up from there. Uh, you need to go in the Linux platform and check at home. Where is the workplace source? Java test project and then well, something is mixed up here. Anyway. Uh, so see here. Uh, these are the two uh, one is the mapper class and second thing is the reducer class that I'm trying to set up here. Okay. So if you try to see this uh, thing, what is being done is that uh, with the help of that particular method, what we are using here, with the help of this uh, set mapper class and reducer class, the first thing that is happening is that uh, the relationship between this mapper to this word class, word count, is being established with the help of this uh, uh, mapper class. And similarly, the same relationship between this uh, reducer to this one is also being established to this uh, uh, driver class also as well, with the help of that conf object, which is nothing but your job conf object that is uh, getting established here okay now can you tell me what are the other set of things that we need to establish i have established the mapper as well as i have established the reducer okay and there is no need for me to think about shuffle and sort because shuffle and sort is something that i am not really looking into it is not programmed and similarly the record rate is also something which is not being programmed but apart from these two things for what set of things I need to provide the configurations in this output. diagram? I need to provide the configuration to the output file as well as I need to provide the configuration to this particular file also as well. You agree with me, Merlin? Yeah. I need to provide the uh, configuration. So that means that uh, I have told you here, whenever you are trying to create this program, here you're going to specify this file.txt. Okay. By default, where this file is created, Where this file exists, file.txt? In the virtual file system. Oh, sorry? In the virtual file system, right? Yeah, in the virtual file system, there is a particular directory, right? What is the directory? I have the directory as a slash. Uh, I have a directory, and directory is nothing but your uh, slash user. 
slash uh, training, right? And this is the place uh, slash user or slash uh, uh, edreka slash user slash uh, edreka slash training. This is the place where your uh, uh, file is existing here. Okay. So what I need to do is that I need to take the configuration of this particular file also as well. And uh, I need to pass it to the driver code class. Why? Because driver code class is nothing but the uh, place where you need to link all these chess pieces. So that is the reason you need to set the input file path as well as you need to set the output directory also as well, where that directory is expected to be written and where you are expected to take the input from this particular file also. Those two things also have to be specified within this uh, driver code class also as well. Okay. So here I'm going to do two things. See here. Here I'm going to do two things. The first thing is going to be, I'm going to use this particular file input format. Before this one, I'll write here. File input format of what should I specify? Uh, file input format dot. I need to specify the input path here, right? Set input path of. So, which one is the thing that we need to specify here? I want to use something like uh, I have set input paths is there as well as set input paths as well as these things are there here. Which one is better that when that I need to use? Which one is better that I need to use? Set input paths of the place where exactly the job configuration is existing. That is the thing that I need to specify here. See, when you're having multiple files that are existing, then I need to specify comma separated paths. Since I'm going to have only one file that is going to be specified, I need to use this particular set input path of. Set input path, this one I need to define. Input for me and dot. What is this KV? This is not required. Right. File input form and dot set input paths of. Okay. What is the first one that I need to specify? The first one that I need to specify is nothing but they were configuration. Configuration that I need to specify. And uh, what is the second thing that I need to specify? I need to define the new path, right? I need to in instantiate an object of this one. So that's why I'm going to define this one as uh, new. Okay, uh, I'm going to define this one as path of. What is your file input? The file input is there in the first argument or in the second argument, Divya? Second argument. File input always will be there in the first argument, right? If you see here, if you see here, the file input will be in the first argument and uh, the output directory is the second argument, right, Divya? Oh, I was thinking for the function. Sorry. No, no, no. Here in the command line, file.txt is going to be the first argument, right? So yeah. here I need to go here and then I need to specify and how that is being represented. The first argument is uh, getting represented with the help of uh, ARGS of zero, right? This is the thing that I'm going to use here. Okay. New path of uh, ARGS of zero that I'm supposed to use here in this particular case. So for this new path also what I need to do here, I need to specify control shift uh, O. So it has defined that particular path also as well. If you, you can see here. Okay, that is done. Now, what is the second thing that I need to do? I need to define this file output format also as well, right? So I'll go here and then start defining this uh, file. I need to define this one as file output format dot. Again, what should I do here? I need to start defining this set output paths. We have this set output path of uh, job configuration path output directory is there job configuration path output directory is there. Okay. So I'll see here. 
for the set output part there are multiple things job arg0 and then path is there and then but what i'm doing here i'm trying to link with the help of this job configuration class that is reason i need to take out this one here okay i need to take out this one here so this kv what you are having here is not required here take out that one and here i'm defining this uh, output path and here what also i need to do here i need to define this one as a new path of args of one of uh, args of uh, one this is the thing that i'm going to define in this particular case is this things clear to you guys very very important any questions you are having please let me know if you don't understand why are we using this configuration class and why this particular configuration class is going to link all these particular chess pieces uh, then this is going to be a problem so see here this configuration class what i am talking about is going to first link this uh, word count class it is going to link this mapper it is going to link this reducer as well as it is also going to link this uh, file along with this particular output uh, directory also as well so the first thing what i have done is uh, i have used this configuration for the purpose of binding your driver code class binding your driver code class okay at the same time uh, i have used our uh, i have used our uh, configuration object okay for the purpose of setting up the path of your input file as well as setting up the path of your output file also as well okay the next thing what i have done is that i have used this configuration for the purpose of uh, uh, setting up this particular mapper class here you can understand here what is being binded here the class itself is being binded but here the object is being bounded here the object is being bounded here okay this classes what you are having here are external to this one that is the reason we are specifying here but here we need to have the runtime object that we need to use that's why you are instantiating an object here in this case here so i am configuring all these particular things here five things i am binding the driver code class okay the file input the file output directory the mapper along with the reducer okay Shashank, is it clear to you? Why are we doing all these things? Yes, Rabu. Kamran? It's clear. Okay. Now, again, coming back to the flowchart. With respect to the mapper, on what set of key value pairs you have the control on what set of key value pairs you don't have the control tell me do we have any control on the input that is being passed to the mapper uh, divya do you have any control on the input that is being passed to the mapper no Maybe the reason is it is the uh, record reader that is going to pass the input to the mapper right so that's why you yeah. don't have any control on that one mm -hmm. similarly do you have the control on the output that is being passed from the mapper yes we, we have, yeah we do have the reason is in this map only we are going to split the strings into words and we are uh, counting the number of instances and then we are passing the output to the uh, reducer but in, internally it is being uh, given to the shuffle and sort so that's why we do have the control on the output that is being passed from the mapper to the downstream applications similarly for the reducer reducer do you have any control on the input no it's being given from the uh, shuffle it's being given from the shuffle and sort that's why you don't have any control on the input but do you have any control on the output yes i do have the reason is i use this particular output collector for the purpose of output dot collect of uh, that method to be used for the passing that output to that file right so we have the control on the outputs that are being passed from the mapper and the reducer respectively those things also i need to bind them also as well okay so here one minute i have a gentleman waiting for me uh, let me ping him and then i continue
Okay. Here, here, the first thing what I'm having is uh, you have this mapper output, right? Mapper output key as well as uh, output value. Okay. Similarly, you have the reducer, which is having the output key and the output value. You have the reducer output key and you have the reducer output value here also as well. Okay. Now the thing is, uh, Divijay, can you tell me what is the data type of this output key and what is the data type of this output value? Data type of output key and output value. Similarly, the data type of uh, reduced output key and reduced output value. Please tell me. I don't need this print to data types, but I am very much interested in this uh, uh, box. Uh, yeah, box data types. Yes. Yeah, it's text and in int writable. Text and int writable, right? So yeah. this is going to be the text here. It is going to be the text here and here. Uh, you're going to have this uh, intratable. Intratable. Extend intratable. Okay. Intratable. Even this doesn't understand some of this. This is text and intratable. Now, what is this one here? What is the output key and what is the output value data types? It's the same thing, text and int writable. Okay, this is also text and this is also uh, int writable only, right? So here, one thing what I'm going to do is, see here. I'm going to bind them once again. With what I'm going to bind them? I'm going to bind them with the help of your uh, configuration object directly. Okay, so here, what I do is, uh, Shashank, one thing I will tell you, the reason why I was not able to send you the jar files in Gmail is uh, uh, Gmail is not allowing to send the dot executable jar files through the email. So that's why I purposefully started blocking them. That's the reason okay. what I did is uh, I shared into my Google Drive and then I started sharing them. That way you can have the option of uh, downloading uh, in your Linux environment, right? That's what that's the same thing that I have done basically. Oh, okay. So I'll define this one as configuration dot. What I want to do here, uh, here you can see here set map set map output key class as well as set map output value class is there. So take that set map input key class. Okay. What is the thing that I need to define here? I need to define this one as uh, uh, text dot class of right. I need to define this one as text dot uh, class. Okay, this is defined. Similarly, what I need to do here, I need to define this one as configuration dot set. Uh, I need to define the value also as well, right? Set map uh, output value class so uh, see here this is not quite your text uh, this is your text dot class and here what should i define here what what would be the class that i need to define here dot class i need to define this 